Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today we're going to be introducing you to WebGL and shaders. Now this tutorial is, I'll be honest, using WebGL can be a bit tedious. So if you're looking to quickly get some cool 3D stuff on your web page, I recommend looking into something like 3JS or something similar instead, something a little more high level, uh, a bit more abstracted away. But if you want to get hardcore with me and, uh, and write some WebGL with the, the native browser APIs, then keep watching. So the first thing we need to do is add a canvas element to our page. So we can do document create element canvas and we get this canvas uh, thing. And then we want it just to fill up the entire screen. So we're going to say the width of the canvas uh, is going to equal the window inner width. And uh, we also want the height. So this is just going to make the canvas as big as our window. And then what we want to do is uh, add it to our DOM here. So we'll say document body append child uh, canvas. And so now when we save the page, uh, we have our canvas that fills the entire window. So now that we have our canvas element, now we need to get the context because the context is what we use to write uh, and interface with um, with WebGL. So we'll say canvas dot get context, and we'll say WebGL here, and this gives us our GL context in which we can do things, things such as uh, you know maybe clearing the screen with a certain color. So to do that, we can say GL clear color. And then I don't know what's a nice color. Uh, these are R, G, uh, B, and then the alphabet. Uh, so, you know, try to take a guess at what cool color this could be. Um, so now that we've set the clear color, we're going to call clear to clear the screen. And so we're going to use GL uh, color buffer bit. And this is just going to clear the entire screen with this color. That is a lovely purplish magenta pink. Now, if we want to draw something on the screen, we need to create a shader program. And a shader tells the computer where to put things and what color they should be uh, in the viewport. And shaders are not written in JavaScript. They're written in GLSL or GL shader language, which is similar to C. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, I, I don't want to learn another language. Well, it's, it's, we're not going to get too deep into it, but you can do really cool things with it. Um, so check out shadertoy.com and these are examples of different shaders of just different things you can do purely in the shaders using GLSL. So I highly encourage you to get excited about this because you can do some really cool stuff with just this. Uh, but anyways, this is still a JavaScript tutorial, so why we need to use shaders um, to, to draw stuff to the screen, uh, we can have it so all our data and the, the vertices and everything and the colors are all still defined in our JavaScript. So let's do that. So let's create our vertex shader here. Uh, so we'll say vertex shader and equals gl create shader. And the type will be vertex shader. We're using this uh, gl context or constant here. And so now that we've created our shader, we can set the source of the shader by saying GL shader source. And then which one we're going to use is the vertex shader. And then this will be a string of the source. And so I'm just going to do it inline here. Um, there's many different ways you can do it. You can have it in a separate file that gets inlined into here, or you can you know write a script tag that gets inlined into here. But uh, basically, we're just going to create a string of um, GLSL. And um, so like, Basically, at this point, this isn't JavaScript between these brackets. This is GLSL. So uh, the first thing we want to do is define an attribute. Um, and an attribute is a way for us to pass in data to our shader here. And so um, the data that we're going to be passing into is they're all going to be vector two. So they're going to be two floating point uh, values. And then we're going to name this position here. Now, every shader needs to have a main function uh, defined. Uh, so we'll just do that by saying void main and put it behind uh, in, within these little curly braces. And this will be the, the main point of our application that, can, that, that starts up. Um, and you can define your own functions in GLSL. There's a whole, it's, a, it's, a, it's an entire language. You, there's a whole bunch to it. 
Uh, but the only thing we care about in our vertex shader, because the vertex shader is what defines the points of the vertices. It's the position on the, the viewport of, uh, of where things are located. And so there's a variable here called gl underscore uh, position that we need to set. And this needs to be set to a vector four, which will be four floating point values. And so the first two uh, will just be our position. So we're only gonna do a two, 2D thing right here. And so the first two will just be the position, the X and Y. And we don't care about uh, these other values here, so we'll just uh, leave them as is. Okay, so now that we have our shader uh, program written, now we need to compile it. So we'll say GL compile shader and we give it the shader to compile. Uh, so now we have our vertex shader. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to, now, now that we have all the positions of our vertices on the viewport, uh, we have, a, we have a, a shader written to, to position all these things in the correct places. But basically we're just gonna say, we're just gonna pass in a buffer here of positions that is just gonna pass it directly down to the shader. Uh, but now we need to color those vertices of what color should they be. And we do that uh, using a fragment shader. And so we'll go here and say fragment shader, gl create shader, gl dot fragment shader, like that. And that's how we create a fragment shader. And we do the same thing here. Say gl uh, shader source, and this will be our fragment shader. And we're just gonna pass it this uh, array that's joined in here um, as the, uh, the source of our shader. And so now the first thing we need to do is we need to set uh, the precision. Uh, and this is the precision that we want the shader to use when um, calculating floats. Um, I can go into a really boring conversation about all of this, but you can just add this line. Um, now there's some browsers that don't allow for high and what you'd have to do medium. Um, but you know, you just, just use high for now and just until you get your feet wet. Um, anyways, so a, a fragment shader, uh, we can't use an attribute in here. We have to instead use a uniform and a uniform is just like an attribute. It allows us to add data from outside and pass them into the shader. But the difference is, is a uniform will be available to both our vertex shader and our fragment shader. And so what we want to do is we want to pass in a color here. And so we'll say it's a vector four, and we'll name the variable color. And so we're going to be able to pass in a, this color uh, value from our JavaScript into the shader to use. So that way we can control the color of this uh, of our vertices here from the, our JavaScript, and so again we're just going to do a void main uh, just to uh, it's you know it's GLSL um, that we're this is the main point of our of our program here, and the variable we set here is called GL underscore frag color, and this will just take our color. So basically we're just saying whatever color we have specified uh, here in our uniform. Uh, we'll just set the color of every vertice to that. So it just makes whatever shape we draw to whatever color we set directly onto it. And so then the last thing we need to do is just compile this shader, um, fragment shader. And now our shaders are ready to be used. Well, I take that back. They're not quite ready to be used. Uh, we still have to create a program, uh, which basically just groups these two uh, shaders together into something we can use when we're drawing. And so we're gonna do program equals GL create program. And then we need to GL attach shader um, to our program, whoops, not that, um, to our program here. And so we'll just attach the uh, vertex shader and then our fragment shader here. So now that we have our shaders attached to this program, uh, we need to link them. Um, do a link program. Program, not that again. So now our, now, for real now, our program is ready to be used when we're drawing later. So let's draw a shape. And to do that, we have to just find uh, some vertices here in an array. So we're just going to create a new float 32 array. And this is going to hold our vertices. And these are just the X and Y coordinates of, um, 
of the each of the vertices of uh, a triangle that we're going to make. And so um, the screen is divided into uh, a, you know a grid, and you have to define these numbers between negative one and one. And so negative one, negative one, x negative one, and y negative one are down here in this uh, left bottom corner, and then uh, x one and y one are up here in this uh, top right corner. So if we want to make a triangle by drawing, by starting on one edge and then drawing across to the other edge and then drawing up to the middle to create our triangle, let's start with the first vertice. And so we're going to start over here on uh, negative 0.5, which is about like three-fourths the way um, onto this side of the, uh, the screen here. And then we'll say negative 0.5 again to say, okay, about three-fourths the way down, just in, you know, in this little quadrant over there. Uh, and then we're going to move across the screen to 0.5. We're going whoop, over into this quadrant over here. But we're still going to stay down in uh, the, that lower region here by saying negative 0.5 to stay over here. Now we want to go up. And so to do so, we're going to go up to the center here. Uh, so our x position is going to be right here in the center. And then we're going to be moving the, the vertice up right here in the middle. So we'll just say 0.5 here. Um, so yeah, so you can just define your vertices in that way and um, it will create a triangle. So now that we have our vertices, uh, we need to go and create those into a buffer that we can bind to our context. And our buffer is basically this positions that will be fed to our, our shader here that will define where the positions of all the vertices get drawn. So to do that, we just say ver buffer, create some space here, gl create buffer. Now we do gl bind buffer, and this is gonna be an array buffer. And so we're gonna bind our buffer to our context here. And then we're going to feed it some data. So we're going to say buffer data. And this is a GL array buffer. And we're going to supply it our vertices here that we've just defined. This is the data that we pass down into it. And we'll just call GL static draw. OK, so now we have our data defined and bound to our context here uh, and to ready to be drawn. And so now we can uh, start to use our shader to draw those vertices to the shader. So when drawing, the first thing we want to do is use our program that we created above. So we'll say GAL use program, program. And this will say, OK, everything we're drawing here, we're going to use this shader program to do the, the actual drawing. And so you can have many different shader programs, um, but we only have one, and so we're going to use that one. Um, so now we need to define uh, our attributes and our uniforms. We need to pass the data into this, uh, these attributes and this uniform here. And so let's, let's do the first one. The uniforms are easy. Um, so let's say a program color, if I can spell it right, gl get uniform. Uh, location so we're basically just finding the location of this uniform uh, in the program and it's called color so now that we have that um, we can set the color so we'll say GL uniform uh, for FB because this will be a vector 4 and we'll say program color that's the uniform we want to set and now we set it to a color so we set RGBA values so we'll just do a zero for the red, one for the green, a zero for the blue, and just one for the alpha. Um, so this is the color that will be passed into here and just fed to every vertice will be of this green color. Um, so now we need to define our, um, our position uh, attribute here. And so we can do that by down here just saying uh, program uh, position equals GL get attribute location of our program and it's called position. Now we need to enable the vertex attribute array. Enable vertex attrib array. 
program position. So we're just saying that this uh, this attribute location is a vertex uh, array that we're going to be passing in. And then now we need to set the pointer. So we say gl vertex uh, attrib uh, pointer. And then we pass in the program position. And then we give it two because uh, our vertices are coming in as uh, pairs of two um, of the x and y coordinates because we're only doing 2D here. And the values will be floats. So we'll say gl floats. That's what types they're going to be. Um, and no, we don't want to normalize. And no, we don't care about the stride. And no, we don't care about the offset. So we'll just do 0, 0 there. Give you a little bit more room. Okay, so now we have uh, used our shader program and we've defined our color uh, um, uniform here. And we've uh, passed in our, we bound our, our, uh, our data here uh, of our vertices and we are passing that into our, um, our attribute here uh, position to position the vertices on the page. So now we're finally ready to draw them. And so to do that, we just say GL uh, draw arrays and the thing we're going to be drawing are triangles um, we're going to be starting at zero and then we, we could just say okay so we have our vertices length this is how many triangles or how many vertices we're going to be drawing and since they're in pairs of two we're only going to be drawing three so we can say divided by two uh, and that's that's how many vertices uh, we're going to be finally drawing. So this is kind of how it goes with uh, with WebGL stuff. You write a bunch of code, you hope it works, and then you finally go to your page, you click it, you hit Command R and you see if it works and usually it doesn't, but let's see if it does. It didn't. Unexpected token. Let's see what my problem is here. Oh, I forgot. Comma. Add that comma back in. Try it again. Nope. Still an unexpected token. That's the problem with writing these shaders as uh, strings. You miss these commas a lot. Okay, go again. Nope. I got my function wrong. GL attribute location. Did I get it wrong? It's probably attrib location. It is attrib location. Because why would it ever be attribute location, huh? Ah, still more wrong. Ah, I can't spell vertex. Let's spell vertex right. Let's try it again. Hooray! It worked. We have a green triangle. We just made our first video game. Of course it's a video game. The object is to stare at the triangle for as long as you can until you see things. I did it for 3 hours and 15 minutes and I saw a bear. So see if you can beat my record. Anyways, I hope this has helped you uh, get a... A introduction to writing WebGL natively and uh, getting uh, started with shaders as well. And if it has, then uh, please share the video and help others get started with this madness. And um, you know, if you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.